In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Well, uh, it's very difficult not to talk about the death of George Floyd. Or I would rather say the killing of George Floyd. So let me talk to you tonight about racism and how I would see it in the light of Christ and in the light of the gospel. It's very wrong in my mind. To take this problem in a simple or a superficial way. The idea of people hating other people because of differences is a very deep problem that really concerns me and I think and I wish it would concern you too. It's becoming, in a way, accepted that people would hate other people because they are different. Whether the difference is uh, in race, color, religion, weight, smartness, education, and you can put whatever you want to put into the idea that as much as humans supposed to be advancing, when it comes to discrimination, we're actually regressing. I want to be honest with you, this problem is clear in the case of George Floyd, but to many it's not clear in other directions, for me it's very clear. It's very clear that we discriminate and in honesty, if we really want to change, the first step would always be to realize that there is a problem. Then number two, to be strong enough to admit and take responsibility. And then number three is to make changes. Until people admit that they act in the wrong way and they think in the wrong way, no real change will happen. People have to take responsibility. And as I said, it's becoming not only white versus black, it becomes white versus black, rich versus poor. It becomes my area versus your area, my school versus your school, my religion versus your religion, even my sect inside my religion against your sect, even inside my own sect against other people who disagree within, within the same faith. And I kept thinking about it, like, how to understand it? How to understand it? And I would say, number one, we have to admit the problem is much more than racism against African Americans. Let's, let's, let's not go around that. We have a lot of wrong and bad feelings toward people who are different than us. And when I kept thinking about why would people act like this? Why would we act like this? I 
I found that it's all about self-esteem. It's all about how you feel about yourself. You know, self-esteem is how do you value yourself? And there are two wrong ways to value yourself. One of them is to try to be more than what you really are. To feel good about yourself, you balloon your self-esteem. You just try to make what you have looks much more than what it really is. And the second thing, which is even worse, is to make less of what other people are. So, because you have a problem with self-esteem, because we all have a lot of insecurities, to feel good and to feel secure, it's either by convincing ourselves that there is something about us more than what really is, or to make less of others, to bring them down so that you will look higher. <clears throat> and I kept thinking about how we talk about others and how we sometimes even generalize whole groups of people. We label areas, we label countries, we label people and I kept saying is that in any way can work with our faith at what what is what we are doing in any way can be reconciled with what's written in the Bible and what Jesus was and is I'm just seeing somebody you would have an idea if this person is wow or this person is yeah this person is good this person is bad this person i can come close to this person i should go away from and can this be reconciled in any way with our christian faith and our orthodox faith It's very sad if we really want to see the truth. It's very sad how we think about others. We're, we're very sensitive about what others are talking about us. Like, we're so sensitive when we're uh, persecuted, when, when, when people make less of us or make less of who we are. We become really angry, we become very sensitive, and rightly so, because nobody should make less of us. But what do we do? How do we think? How do we feel about others? Do we really treat them in a fair way? Do we really value them in a fair way? Do we really love them in a real way? Do we really hope the best for them? Do we respect them for being different? I want you tonight to, to do the difficult thing. The difficult thing is to be really honest with the self. Really, this is not a talk for people. It's a talk for me and for you. I don't care what people are going to think about what I'm saying tonight. As long as some people are going to take it in a sincere way and really change things in their lives. When you value yourself, how do you do it? Is it coming from real righteousness and real good things that you worked hard to attain inside you? Is, is your self-esteem coming from inside? Or it's coming from outside? Is it coming from adding things to yourself? Medals all over the place. I am the one who worked hard. I am uh, the son 
of this person. I am from this family. I come from this country. I am. Where do you get your self-esteem from? Is it from real inner goodness? Real inner values? Or you get them from, oh, I went to this school. Not like that. My school is, my degree is, my neighborhood is, my car is. These are not bad things if you have them. But if you think that because of that you're much better than others, then you are in completely wrong way. You're going in a completely wrong direction. If you've been blessed with things and you don't acknowledge that you worked hard using the things that were given to you to achieve what you are in, then you are, I, I, I can't find the word. I, I, wanna, I wanna say what Jesus said to the rich man who kept growing his fortune on account of his salvation and he said, told him like you foolish rich men why because the, the man kept adding stones kept adding wealth but inside there was negative wealth there was negative goodness so how do you really value yourself Who's good, who's bad, who's rich, who's poor. And if you're doing it the opposite way, it's even worse. Like feeling good by trying to make everyone around you feeling miserable. By always pointing your finger to the negatives and to the, uh, the missing things so that you make the person in front of you always feeling like whatever you do you're never going to be good enough that's 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 mean that's all this is abuse this is clearly abusing others but the sad thing that we've been living this for a very long time and sadly even for people of faith so that it becomes like acceptance. It becomes acceptance. But you know what? Not, not, not in honesty with yourself and not when you stand in front of God. Yes, we label people. Yes, we discriminate against people. Yeah, it's not only black and white. It's so, so many things. Yeah, we, we don't like a lot of categories of people for no reason or for a wrong reason. And we also like a lot of categories of people also for a wrong reason. Which is very superficial but very dangerous. So the problem is, in my mind, two things. Superiority that you have created superiority of who you are as an individual or as a family or as a group or as a religion or as a country or as a race and number two is making less of others it can be direct or indirect in so many ways it can be in words, it can be in acts, it can be in behavior, it can be by looks. And again, I'm not saying white and black, I'm saying even black and yellow, even everywhere. See the tension between different groups. You think that, the, like, uh, yes, now it's very clear that the... the the racism, uh, the racism after, uh, for, for the African Americans, but don't forget, like, how do African Americans behave when they see someone who's not African American? 
maybe you're not gonna like what I'm saying now because it's not the right time because you're hurt so, they are hurt so much but I'm talking generally how do we feel our people are of different colors and race and backgrounds the problem is very deep the problem again is that we started to value our self in a wrong way you start to find your place within the environment by either ballooning who you are, magnifying to be superior, or by stepping on others to bring them down so that you will feel you're a victim. Why? Because we have no clear definition of what's good and what's wrong. What's good and what's wrong? The value of things are not clear. Who's good, who's bad? You, you think like you come to church and uh, you serve in church and you have a name in the church and you talk about Christ and you carry the Bible. But after that, you when you sit with your friends and you talk about people of another religion and you make less of them, do you think this is in any way something that can be reconciled? Like, can you put both acts together and say this is a normal behavior? You tell me, but it's wrong. Be belief doesn't make any difference. I'm not saying you agree on every belief, but there's difference between disagreeing with the belief and respecting people. And respecting their belief because that's what they have been handed. The idea, the third point that I, it's, it's that I want to talk about. So the first point was admitting that there is a problem and looking deep into it. Number two is like self-esteem and how we measure ourselves. And this is, I think, the core of the problem for all of us. The third point I want to talk about is. How do we see Christ? Like, where, where did it come, the gap between Christ and us? And I'll explain this. Like, if you read the Bible carefully, carefully, and look to the character of Jesus Christ, his behavior, his talk, his attitude, Then you like it and you call yourself Christian because you're following Christ. Isn't that what it is? Christians are people who believe in Christ, who follow the steps of Christ. You see, the perfect behavior, you see somebody who's actually in my mind from a human point of view, somebody who did a revolution in the society, in the Jewish society. When it comes to what he did, coming to the side of the poor, coming to the side of the sinners, coming to the side of the people who were not accepted, like the publican, Zacchaeus, like uh, the Canaanite woman, like the Samaritan woman and Samaritan people, like the leper, nobody could touch him and he healed him. The, the woman that was bleeding, which is in the thought of that society at that time, it's, it's a curse, it's like she's not clean. And she touched him, standing with the Samaritan woman, talking to Canaanite woman, the woman that was washing his feet, he broke barriers, all the barriers. All the society stigma about men talking to a woman, standing with a woman, a woman that's bleeding and how it's taken or understood. People with wrong beliefs like the Samaritan or the Canaanites. 
and the, and, and the centurion and the publican, how he was seen in the Jewish community at that time. Again, here I said something wrong. I said in the Jewish community, in the minds of some of the Jews in the Jewish community. You see how we fall easily into the trap, the Jews. It's not true. Jesus, when we say Jews, we, we have to include Jesus and Mary and all the disciples and the apostles and the first church. You see, if, we, if we're not careful in our wordings, we generalize. That's wrong. That's completely wrong. Isn't that why a lot of Jews have suffered because of the label and the attitude toward them as if they all are the same few, very few people that really were part of the conspiracy against Christ. And we talk about them sometimes, or some people do talk about them, forgetting that the whole Christian family was Jewish. The whole first Jew Christian church was Jewish. And we're able to, to do it like easily. I mean, we, we do the mistake in an easy way. Because we all have the tendency now to go wrong. I see a lot of discrimination that doesn't work with, with the character of Christ. Loving the enemy and going the extra step and going the extra mile and entering the houses and of the people who were labeled as bad or wrong or unclean. And going to the cities that are considered to be wrong and, 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 and cursed. Even the disciples could understand like, why Christ is standing with that Samaritan war for that long. They couldn't like digest that easily. So Jesus was, and that's my point, was breaking all the barriers. And now we, every Christian sect, is thinking like we're the one who are really following Christ the right way. But where are we from what Christ did? Where are we from his love, his generosity, from social justice, standing by the poor, by the minority, we have no idea how the lepers were treated or how a, a woman that was bleeding was, was dealt with. The sinners, the woman that was caught in adultery, like the easy judgment, she has to be stoned. Are we Christians? Maybe we need to ask ourselves, are we, are we really Christians? Are we really following Christ? Do we really believe in him? Because if we do that, then there is something wrong. There is something major wrong. Either we don't believe or we say we believe, but we act in the wrong way and we need to change that. And by the way, I'm not talking at all about your faith. You, your faith is sacred to you, and that's great. And if, if you did your homework, which I encourage everyone to do, like you believe, because of you know why you believe. You study, you pray, you do your homework, you just don't take faith as is. Because if you take it as is, why do you blame others if they did the same thing? You have to experience what you have so that when you talk about your religion, you talk about something you, you're living, not something you, you act like a stupid defending something that you don't know and attacking things that you don't know. Isn't that what's in the, in the internet most of the time? And I, I'm sorry, I hate even people defending Christianity or attacking other religions. I hate to watch these things. It makes me feel sick. I'm 
never going to be happy if somebody talks in a mean way about any other religion and proves they are wrong. That's not the way to do it. You should do it in love, in a study, in respect, if you want to compare. If you want to compare religion, if you want to prove that which religion you believe in, you have to do it the same way Christ was doing it. People believed in Christ not because they were going to school studying, but because they saw Christ himself how he acts. If you think you can just like keep punishing others so that they will believe in what you do, I'm sorry to tell you, you need help. Very easily, we're all taken into the problem of uh, George Floyd. This uh, policeman definitely felt superior for a wrong reason and felt less of that person, if he even thinks he's a person. So he made more of himself, he made less of that. So he has his own way of believing and thinking and he convinced himself of completely wrong things and wrong idea about others. And you might be surprised to ask this man and you tell you like he's defending the right thing and he's doing the right thing. It's for the purpose of law and discipline. Or maybe he thinks because this is his country, not the other's country. Or maybe this is the true way of being a good American or good Christian. Or You see how, how we build a house of lies, a house of wrongdoing because the foundation is wrong. We don't spend time to think about what's inside, what's really inside. It's very sad. So Jesus started, number four, not only uh, he was so different, he started to change the definition of self-worth. Like self-worth, he disrupted the idea of ballooning the self-worth. He said the opposite. It's like a mustard seed. If you don't put it in the ground and it dies, like What's the worst of yourself if it doesn't make goodness for all people around you? Like a seed, if you keep the seed, even if you put it in, in a gold box, it's always going to be a seed. No value until this seed goes to the ground and dies, and then it brings fruits, and the fruits are not going to be for the sake of the seed. The seed is already not there. But for the worth of everyone around. So we started to direct our mind of not being selfish and that the value of ourself is in making everyone around us good. And he started to talk in a completely different way, changing the idea of who's first and who's last. He said, if you want to be first, be last. If you want to be the master, serve. If you want to be the teacher, wash the feet of the disciples. Amazing, amazing, and so sadly, we've listened to all that, and we do the opposite. Or if we don't do the opposite, we at least not address that if others are doing the opposite, it is wrong and not accepted. We start to give excuses. Yes, my soul. If they leave themselves, they're going to be, this is going to happen to them. So they have to stand for themselves. They have to be. And you know what we see, what, what, what we say in our culture, in our homes. You, you, you see what we do. We have to be careful. We have to rethink a lot of things. Christ changed the idea about happiness and sadness. Happiness and joy is in giving, not in taking. First and last, strong and weak, rich and poor. Who is rich? The one who is able to give or the one who has the money and dying for more? So if you say that you're Christian and you believe in Christ, 
then we have to change a lot of our attitudes, a lot of things that we are doing in the wrong way without even realizing and just becomes accepted. My dear brothers and sisters, I have to talk to you because this was really a heavy thing in my mind all the last days and weeks, even before the death or the killing of George Floyd. How do we see people? How do we value people? How do we value ourselves? What is the Christian teaching when it comes to this? Like, is there a clear Christian teaching? Yeah, let me show you some verses that I got. Galatians 3.28 There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male and female. For we are all one in Christ Jesus. Male and female, that's another big thing. Big thing. You, you, you think that we are here at that time and age in this country and we, we were beyond the point of discrimination because of being female or male. No, we're not. John 7, 24, do not judge by appearances, but judge with the right judgment. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. And remember, when Jesus loved us, we were yet sinners. Remember, James 2, 9, but if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. So transgression here is because you are showing partiality. Revelation, I love this one, 7, 9. After this, I looked and behold a great multitude that no one could number from every nation. Listen carefully. From every nation. From every nation. From all tribes and peoples and languages standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes and palm branches and that. From every nation, from every tribe. It's not like we in different countries. No, from every Those who wish like to, to be the one and only one who has the privilege. Yes, if you what if what you have is the right thing, keep it, cherish it, live it. But it's not your business to exclude others. It's not your business to be the judge. Let me read for you this also. Ephesians 4.32 Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God forgave you. Nehemiah 13.3 As soon as the people heard the law, they separated from Israel and those from other foreign descent. That was the attitude that Colossians 3.11 Here there is not Greek and Jew circumcised and incircumcised, barbarian, Pisian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. See this one please. Listen to 1 John 2.19 Whoever says he is in the light and hates his brother is still in darkness. Who is his brother? Who is his brother? Remember the Good Samaritan, the story of the Good Samaritan? Like when God said, Love your God, 
from all your heart, and love your neighbor as yourself. So somebody asked, so who is my neighbor? And he told them the story of the good Samaritan. The good Samaritan, according to the uh, Jewish teaching at that time, is a heretic, is is going to hell. It's like the, he has no chance. They are wrong. Remember the Samaritan woman when she said to Jesus, why are you talking me and you are a Jew and I'm Samaritan? Because Jews did not even talk to Samaritans. Talk. And here comes Jesus in tenderness and compassion. and said, woman, can you give me to drink? Like, I am the one seeking you. My brothers and sisters, I, I, I'm sorry if uh, I didn't give you the usual Bible study tonight, but I think this issue is very important. And going back again, like it's not only white and black, that's the incident now that's very clear that brought this into the front, and that happens, by the way, a lot. And if you don't see that also, you have to ask yourself, why can't you see it, although it's very clear? But as I said, it's not only white and black. It's even black and others and other and black and yellow and Spanish and, and everything. And religion against religion and even inside every religion against other sects of the same religion. Number two, go deeper a little bit. It's all about self-worth. You want to feel good about yourself. You don't want to feel weak. You want to take away the insecurity. So what do you do? You either balloon what you have, make it huge from outside, or bring others down. Beware. You might be doing this in your own circle, in your own family. Yes, in your own family, in your own church, in your own community. You bring others down so that you would look more than what you really are. The three is like, what did Christ do? How did, how did he behave? What did he say? What are Christian teachings? They are very clear. If you can see them, there is a huge problem. If you can still believe in Christ and in Christian teachings and you act like this. The number four is you need to look deep into yourself. And you have your worries and you have your own uh, insecurities. Please, please. That's not the way to change it. The change comes from inside. The value comes from inside. Build what's inside. You're going to be loved, appreciated, and you're going to be the first. Once you really take care of what's inside and make what's inside really good, work on yourself from the inside. The Bible says in John 8 that you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And my request to you tonight is sit with yourself and seek the truth. Seek the truth. Condemn the wrong behavior. Put it into the light. Because that's the only way you're going to be free from a very wrong way of thinking that again is not only about us or them or them. It's all over the map. It, it's all over the map. Discrimination in all dimensions in all sides is there. And maybe it's time to set yourself free from a false self-esteem and start to build a real one. Look to Christ, listen to his words, and may his word set me and set you free, and glory be to God forever. Amen.